I told you guys that I never would talk politics on this podcast, but it's starting to become impossible. And I really don't want to be inflammatory toward anyone. Everyone knows I'm a registered Republican, but I only agree with my party about half the time. With the Democrats, I agree with them maybe half the time as well. About 10 years ago, there was a group of white conservatives that rebelled against the U.S. government, named the Bundys. They were a family of ranchers, and they took over a government facility in, uh, I don't know, was it Nevada, I think, maybe, or Oregon? I don't know. But anyway, it doesn't matter. They took over a government facility by force with guns. Conservatives cheered them on. Now you have a group of leftists in Seattle, pretty much doing the same thing, taking it over by force, with peace, whatever. Some of them have weapons, but they're taking over part of a town and a government facility. Now the conservatives are going crazy. I don't know which part is right or which part is wrong, but you guys have to see the hypocrisy here. Here's another thing, gun control. Everyone knows that I'm a proponent of the Second Amendment. That doesn't mean everybody can go run around shooting each other. But here is one thing that is really, really important to understand. Is that 1967 was when California changed their stance on open carry. Okay, you know, all the conservatives are talking about open carry right now. It needs to be open carry in all these states. Well, California was open carry until Ronald Reagan decided to make California not an open carry state. And the reason was because the Black Panthers were open carrying in Oakland as their own uniform security patrol, okay? So California does not have open carry. You can't carry a loaded weapon in public because of Republicans. I just think it's really important. Like I said, I'm a Republican. I'm a proud Republican. I'm going to stay a Republican. Uh, but I still think half of what my party says and does is wrong. And I think you Democrats, too, they're my friends. I think you should start seeing your party in that way, too. I think what the Democrats are doing, half of what they're doing is loony, just like with the Republicans. And I think if we all start thinking like that, I think we can get a little bit further and we can kind of embrace one another and care for one another and realize that, you know what, this world ain't so bad. All right, now we're going to get to a little reading from our wonderful book, the 637 best things anybody ever said. Oh, and by the way, these are not reading glasses. I did get a new prescription of my bifocals, and you will see they're not perfectly fitted because I do have a crooked nose from a car accident back in the day, so I'm still trying to get them just right. And they also look like Coke bottles because I am blind as a bat without them. All right, let's go. 452, John W. Raper, which is kind of an unfortunate last name, especially in the Me Too era. <laughs> there is no pleasure in having nothing to do. The fun is having lots to do and not doing it. I so much agree, Mr. Raper. 453, Gene Kerr. Hope is the feeling you have that the feeling you have isn't permanent. Ooh. For someone who suffers from anxiety and depression, that's kind of cool. Hope is the feeling you have that the feeling you have isn't permanent. 454, Abby Hoffman. I was probably the only revolutionary ever referred to as cute. Aww. 455, Fran Leibowitz. Success didn't spoil me. I've always been insufferable. <laughs> All right, folks, I love every one of you. I hope you take some of my uh, talks to heart, and I hope it changes some of you. I uh, love you all.